Hey guys, what's going on? Hope you're doing well. Welcome back to another EF Falcon video. Today's main focus is to get most of the stuff plumbed up, ready for its first start. So we're very close, we're almost there. I'll show you what I've been doing behind the scenes off camera. So over the past couple of days, I've installed a fuel pressure regulator and I've fabricated a custom bracket. You can see it's two pieces of stainless steel that bolt to a factory location on this chassis. It's pretty clean install, I'm very happy with it and it's in a location where you know the tuner will be able to really easily find and see what pressure we've got right there. I've already ran two lines to it, the vacuum source that goes to the plenum, just down somewhere in there. I've ran the fuel rail outline. You can see it just comes through there, down underneath the plenum, and up through to the regulator right there. Got a 90 degree AN6 fitting and a straight AN6 fitting on the rail and a 3 8 braided rubber line, which should do perfect for this application. Yesterday, I also sent off the power steering lines to be made up and the way that you get EF Falcon Barra swap power steering to work, you get the Barra power steering line and then you get the EF Falcon power steering line and then you go to a line shop and you get them to crimp them together. In terms of AC, we of course are running AC because why would you not run AC? We've got these AC lines from the Wreckers as well as a Wreckers uh, AC compressor from a B series uh, Barra and they're actually different on FGs, I'm pretty sure. You can see I've chopped the bottom one just down here and there is a little bit of a discrepancy in size but I'm sure the, the line shop will be able to figure that out. I've also chopped up here where they're going to mount together so all I'll do is I'll just take these off today and take this to the uh, line shop as well and they'll be able to crimp and make up a line for me. Something I also want to do today is fix up this garage because I have no idea what's in the car. It's been a long time since we you know started putting stuff in here. I don't remember what parts we have in there so I'm going to just clean everything out. That's why I've got the chaser moved out already and and we'll be able to figure out exactly what we do and don't need from the wreckers because we need to go later today. So I've got a bunch of EF Falcon stuff and this garage is a mess now. I've already started to put some of the cardboard in the Camry to get rid of it at the wreckers. And we're also just trying to sort through what we do and don't need. This exhaust will be for sale if you want an EF Falcon exhaust. Not really anything wrong with it. Need to get rid of the catalytic converter and this as well. But I'm just gonna go ahead and just keep cleaning this garage out and then probably get ready for the wreckers. Gunfire, holy crap. <laughs> Woo! We have our Raceworks goodies for the EF Falcon. Massive shout out to Scott from Raceworks. Absolutely plugging us hard. Okay, before we get home, I decided to drop by Mr. Alex's place because he has been building a quad bike. Well, not building, fixing. Uh, just, you know, sitting on my couch, relaxing, and then I hear a Jay-Z somewhere driving past. I thought I'd call Rex, and guess what? He's on my street. <laughs> Peter had this in his front yard for like, I don't know, seven years or whatever. How long has it been there for? Uh, since 2009. He's had it there since 2009. And Alex was like, I'll take it and I'll fix it because Peter didn't want to fix it. Well, I did. Let's just pull the car be off, pull the motor off, give everything a good clean. And then once we went to try to start and I broke the cord. Mm -hmm. But my boy Rexton here, yes. hooked it up with a new cord. Oh! Nah. I don't know what, how to yeah, fix the tension. I think you have to move the motor, that's weird. So it's now the next day. Yesterday, after I came back from Alex's house, I then went ahead and took off all the AC lines. You could see that we had to remove the headlight and some other little things in order to get to uh, the front AC lines. I also had to remove the intercooler, which was a little bit of a pain in the ass because of the way that I made the brackets. But after I did that, I went off back to the line shop, dropped off the lines, and then I picked up Alex, and then we went to the wreckers. All right, we're back at the wreckers. My second home at this point. Oh, picked up a sexy cow. I also left my favorite tool here the other day and hopefully 
we can find it again, but I don't think we're going to be able to because a lot of people come to this wreckage. Oh my god, man! What is this? So what we need to do is we need to take this fender off in order to get access to the wiring harness. And once we get the wiring harness, we'll be able to snip some of it off. So I don't need to bother trying to pull any through to the engine side of stuff. Thank goodness I double checked with Bill. This is literally like the last thing that we need. And then the car runs, hopefully. Do you want to hire me to work on your cars? Like I do for Rexton? This is how well I'll treat your body work. No, this is just in the way. And don't worry, with a bit of heat, it'll all bend back. <laughs> Ooh. Oh! Man. Ooh. After much struggle, we managed to get the loom out. This was next to impossible with the amount of tools that we had. This is the last thing, last piece of the puzzle. Very excited. Now let's get the hell out of here. I just spotted something. Bro. What on earth is that? <laughs> He's got more clearance than Nathan's Prado. What the hell? And now we're at the present date. And we finally have the lines back from the shop. Really awesome job, thanks to Lorenzo at NZ. The lines were done within a day, but I picked him up later so I could go see his car. He's got a Majesta crown similar to PJ's one, and it's it's sick. So this line here, this is a big AC line. That's the smaller one of the two. And you can see the crimps are absolutely awesome. Um, hopefully I've measured everything upright. This should bolt directly on. And here's our power steering line as well. I've just put some of the factory uh, heat shielding around there and we need to bolt this up. Apparently it's going to be a little bit longer because he had to keep a restrictor in here that it had from factory. So in the power steering line on the EF Falcons, they have a restrictor in this line. So if you ever get your EF Falcon power steering line made up um, for a barra swap, make sure that you keep the restrictor in there. So we're going to chuck these lines on the car now and fingers crossed everything bolts up. <laughs> The custom AC lines went in absolutely perfectly guys. Super happy with these. Look at that. Shout out to NZ. I didn't need to tighten these bits up because they uh, put some civil joints on there so I could uh, make sure that they fit absolutely correct. And you can see it's connected up there. Both the uh, new custom lines are connected to the AC compressor and run up to the factory locations. If you do want to run AC on a Barisopt EF, you will need that little sensor right there that I'm pointing to right now that goes on the hard line of the uh, Barra AC lines. But that's literally all you need. So this is a new addition to the Rex H garage. We have a whiteboard and you can see right here, we have fit power steering lines. We can tick that off and move on to the next thing. We now have the custom power steering line installed. It's all nipped up, ready to go. The only thing I need to tighten now is that little swivel piece right over here. And then the line is tightly installed with the OEM bracket just there as well with a 12 millimeter screw. I kind of mangled that bracket, but it's better than having no bracket. Even with the line being a little bit longer than factory, it still seems to sort of go in the right places um, with the right sort of bend. So yeah, I'm very happy with the power steering lines. Let's cross that off the list. Now I've already crossed it off the list because I made a mistake but we will do it again. So we have AC and power steering done. The next thing we're gonna tackle is the engine mounts that we need to tighten down, engine mount bolts. The next thing we're gonna do is the fuel pressure return and we're gonna tighten it because apparently that's what I wrote down here. Pressure regulator return, bub. So the last thing we need to do with the fuel pressure regulator is the return line just here, so I need to take this little fitting that I have installed on the bottom of the regulator and I need to put this on a hose. So I'll show you where this will need to connect up to at the bottom. So just over here, we have our fuel lines and other lines, hard lines. You can see I've already done the fuel inline. This is a 3 8 braided rubber line with AN6 fittings. And this right here is the return line. Originally, the standard fuel pressure regulator um, was mounted on this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to slip over the standard hose then I'm going to put a barb connector in and I'm going to connect it up to our 3 8 line and run that to the regulator. So we have our Raceworks 400 series 3 8 rubber line and we're going to measure this up and put that fitting on. But apparently what you need to do to get a nice seal is you need to heat up this line in some really hot or boiling water and then slip the fitting down inside without lubrication so you get um, the tightest fit. Alright, we have our 
boiling water in a teacup. I'm gonna stick this in here. Let it get nice and loose and warm. Oh yeah, that's hot. All right, let's slip this inside. Oh man. Well, that went super easy. So we're now going to use this AN6 female fitting to go onto the male adapter that goes into the fuel pressure regulator. And I'm just going to run the whole line down there to get an accurate cut so I don't use too much of this hose. Okay, so I've cut that line to length. As you can see, it's not too long, but now we need to connect uh, the standard smaller hose to this hose. So I've got this barb reducer right here. It's a 3 8 to 5 16 so this is a 3 8 hose and that is a 5 16 hose. So we need to um, connect the two. And hopefully we didn't cook up the length here. Man, that went in easy as. Well, that was easy. That is the fuel pressure regulator return line all sorted now. AN fitting to push lock hose. And we also have it running down to the return. So all installed and that is another thing off the list. Bam. I also mounted the dipstick uh, last night, so I'm gonna cross that off as well. We're getting there. I think next I'm gonna do the alternator bolts. So the alternator is connected to the belt that we've already installed. So first thing I'm gonna do is remove the tension on the belt and then take the belt off. Oh, far out. Just down in there are the two spots where the bolts go. I didn't put them on because I didn't have any, but when I went to the wreckers last, I took some because I forgot to do it while the engine was out. So we're going to get those two bolts in and nip it up. Bolt number one. Oh, not going in. Oh. Right, I'm going to need two hands for this. There you go. Alternator bolts installed. I'm not going to chuck the belt back on because I do need to access more stuff and the belt being off is going to make it a bunch easier. Um, where are we? Alternator bolts. Bam! So we have a few parts here from TI Performance. There's a bunch of stuff that we need in order to finish off the barrow's wiring and a few little sensors that we also need to finish off the barrel. Hell yeah, we get a TI Performance hat. Have a suss of that. We also have a TI Performance hoodie as well. Sick, that's awesome. Anyway, let's get to the barrow stuff. So I've been following TI Performance on Instagram for a while and I've seen some of their posts and they include some lolly bags. You can option up your purchase with a lolly bag. So Jason has included some lolly bags for us. I specifically asked for these. So Jason, thank you so much, man. <laughs> so this is really important. We have a can barra and this is going to allow a lot of the accessories to still function in the EF with the new engine. So I believe this will allow us to run the, um, the AC, the gauges, the tachometer, yep, and a bunch of little other stuff. So I don't know if I'll be able to give this to Bill to wire up or if I'll have to wire this up myself. Can Barra is an absolute must, it seems, to do a Barra swap from what I have learned online. Sick, so this is what I was looking for. We have a map sensor. This is a four bar map sensor for a FG turbo, I believe. So we also need to chuck that on as well. And some wiring too. So I think we're going to wrap it up there, guys. If you do want to cop some of these parts that I just unboxed, head over to TI Performance. And if you also want some Raceworks goodies, TI Performance is a distributor of Raceworks stuff as well. Anyway, you can see that we've got quite a bit of a list to finish off. So there's not too much left. I mean, there is a lot. We're slowly chipping through it and we'll be able to start this thing in a few weeks, I reckon. Really appreciate your love and support and I will see you in the next video. Catch up. Pretty damn good.